Hello, my name is Jeff Young, and I'm an eSpec author. And today I'm going to read you an excerpt from my short story called Bucket Brigade, which was recently published in eSpec's In Harm's Way. I'm going to show you the cover here shortly, and then we'll proceed with the story. Certain experiences can haunt the observer for a lifetime. For Sasha Andarev, it was not an image, but a sound. And on hearing it, he could not place the scrape of metal mixed with the dragging noise of a knife through meat. He could hardly distinguish that sound repeated over and over in quick succession before the inrush of air and the pounding impact overloaded his senses. When he pulled himself groggily awake, Sasha searched the HUD overlay for any of the other passengers' call sigils. The data feed from the combat AI and the comm chatter from the others was missing from the sides of his vision, but the comm still showed open channels. Seconds before, they were all chattering about groundside leave and when the shuttle brought them down through the crowd, cloud layer. He shook his head. The overlay glitched and his vision blurred. As he stabilized, he realized the floor slanted hard to his right. We've been hit and we're down, he thought, becoming aware of the gravity. It was a struggle pulling himself free of the rear lockdown or baby seat, as the experienced soldiers called it. Standing, he slid his linear accelerator rifle into his hands. And then he made his way across the canted floor. As he moved, his combat armor fiddled with his inner ear until it felt like he was on level ground. His armor, officially the smart suit among the enlisted, soldier suit, or usually just called suit, linked to implants in his body. Its AI amped his vision, balance, and even the mental state through chemical or electrical impulses. Everything he saw and heard was filtered through his implants. It gripped every inch of him like a jealous lover. Stasis gel covered him in a thick cocoon but in the suit, it was his second skin. Sasha trusted the suit with his life, and right now he had no doubt that it had kept his ass alive. Whoever shot down their shuttle was coming to finish the job. It was likely rebel forces out to sever the Federate's fuel supply line. They often targeted tritium refineries like the one in orbit over their destination, Minos, the small moon circling Achenar. Then the suit hit him again with it gas. Combat drug dropped over him like a shroud. It cooled all his nerves. It made his focus hyperspine, and the mix brought him to knife edge awareness. The shuttle lighting flicked as Sasha worked his way over to his gear pack and slammed it onto his back. He paused for a moment, launching his minor drones, three micro drones that lifted from the suit, and then he set them on search mode, looking for signs of survivors. A sigil appeared on his helm, a small blue cross. He focused on it, and the suit brought up the shuttle manifest, expanding to display a woman's photograph and basic stats. Conroy, the medic, one of their staff members being transferred to the Minos base. Things were looking up. They needed a medic. Well, what they needed now was a goddamn miracle, but a medic was a good start. And if Conroy made it, then perhaps there were others. Another sigil came into focus, this time in red, a pair of crossed tools. Uraeus. The medic mechanic would be helpful too, but considering the state of the shuttle, that was probably one miracle too many. The choice was common sense. Sasha set out to find the medic first. He would find the flight mechanic as soon as he could. His HUD overlay shifted back and forth as he triangulated Conroy's position. Scrambling along, Sasha felt his way through the loose debris on the decking. The wall paneling had popped from its mooring and loops of optical cable hung like jungle vines from the ceiling and walls. As he turned ahead, he realized he was being trapped in the baby seat was probably the only reason he was still alive. The main bay door had taken a strike. Back into the shuttle had disintegrated into jagged shrapnel, which bristled from the wall before him. The remainder of the door had sailed across the room and embedded in the wall. It had sliced through most of the troop rack, seating like a blade. The fore part of the rack remained attached to the ceiling, but canted at an angle. One suit was still locked in, but unmoving. He couldn't see the rest of the unit. They had to have been carried along with the momentum of the flying door. 
their suits would have locked up rigid as soon as their AIs detected the incoming impact, trying to brace and protect their occupants. It was a futile effort, though, given the sheer mass of the door. Inertia would have made any impact deadly. Glancing to the left at the gaping hole left by the bay door, Sasha at first saw nothing but darkness lit by occasional flickers of flame from the burning wreckage. He kept his view on the darkness until the suit compensated for the lack of light. The shuttle came down in a valley. The debris was strewn in their wake like a trail of burning breadcrumbs leading right to them. They had to get out. Conroy's sigil hovered over the still figure at the fore of the troop rack. She was one lucky devil. The door had missed her by a mere foot. Shouldering his linac, Sasha made his way to her. From what he could see, Conroy's suit appeared intact. A gold bar appeared above her sigil. Tam, the combat AI had flagged Conroy as command. Every other ranking officer was dead. More id gas hit him, hit him hard, and everything in his perception tightened yet another notch. We're not looking good here, Sasha. Not good at all, st Conroy stated, her helm coming to face him, voice shaking. Pilots are gone. I picked up a signal from flight mechanic Uraeus. The other passengers, well, we'll talk about the others when I get done arguing with this damn CAI. Sir, we're in a stationary target for active hostiles. If we're going to survive, we need to move, Stasha stated. He gave her suit a quick once over. How badly hurt was she? When the id gas hit him, he couldn't stand to sit still, and she wasn't moving. That was a bad sign. Straight out of the book. I'm glad to say they hammered that into your head. Got a few loose ends to tie up here first, and then we can talk about evacuating. Link your drones with mine and see if we can find Uraeus. With six drones, Uraeus was quickly located, and his seat had broken free of the troop rack and was spun around with its back slammed into the wall. The mechanic stumbled to his feet, one hand against the tilted wall, the other grasping his weapon. His gear pack was already attached. Initial objective achieved, Sasha ordered his minder drones out into the night. Gradually, they began building a terrain map of the crash site. The combat AI dutifully superimposed it over the map of Minos. The image spun until it aligned with terrain mapping. 38 clicks to base, a long walk in the dark with injured personnel and hostiles. The ground wasn't bad, but the only cluster to cover was clustered around the waterways. There were no trees, but rather large fungus growths, which occupied that ecological niche. Animal life was confined to the rivers and seas. None of that would help them with cover or speed along their trip. Uraeus, you're on watch, Conroy ordered. The flight mechanic hesitated for a second and walked over to the gaping hole in the hall. Conroy took a breath before continuing. The suits already patched up a number of Uraeus's problems. Sasha, you're just damn lucky. Stay that way. You can help the rest of us whenever we need it. She was quiet for a moment, and when she spoke again, there was a different, more determined tone to her voice. One of the things they probably don't mention to anyone who serves is it's not only does the CAI have a suite of medical programs helping me deal with all of your injuries, it also has a triage program. It will not direct me to treat someone it deems who will not survive ahead of someone who has a better chance. Command doesn't spread that around. Right now, the program was only telling me to help you two. It wasn't telling me to help the other nine survivors because it considers them dead. However, since I'm in command, I overrode the AI. Uraeus let out a sharp cough. Buckets, he said. Sasha felt a chill run down his spine. He glanced over at Uraeus and eyed the raised bar on the back of his suit's helm. Old hands liked to joke it was for hanging up the helm whenever the suit wasn't in use, but others knew it had a more sinister purpose. And that was the point at which Sasha identified the sound he'd heard upon waking. The sound of nine helm guillotines sliding across and severing the heads from their occupants since their bodies were damaged beyond recovery. In theory, the head could be kept cryogenically preserved until a new body could be grown from clone stock. The theory didn't consider that there was a limited amount of power in each helm, keeping the head cooled. Nine ticking clocks. Before he could start doing the math of how much they weighed and consider how to carry them, 
the suit hit him again with more aid gas. Hold on there, Sasha Conroy said, and he felt her connect with his suit. The razor-fine quality of his attention wavered and then leveled out. That stuff is good, but too much makes you likely to follow only AI commands. You'll be most helpful focused, but still thoughtful. First, I need you to get ready for us to go. Find the three printer. Start off with three all-purpose gear packs with larger capacity than our regulation ones, and then set it to make more minder drones. Run off as many as you can until the feed bin's empty. Sasha turned back to the rear section where the three printers were housed. He watched on the overlay as Conroy gave control of her minder drones to Uraeus, who added his own to the search pattern. And their grid extended farther and farther. Unfortunately, they hadn't encountered any hostiles. So far. With the three printers rolling, Sasha worked his way back to their front. We'll get about 13 more drones before the feedstock runs out. The gear packs are already done printing. The three printers bin is punctured, and I wasn't sure we had time to try running another line. The backup three printer was completely destroyed, he reported. When he reached Conroy, he was surprised to find her still strapped into the remains of the troop rack. She turned her helm, looking up at him. Gonna need some help, Sasha. But first, could you pick up my arm from over there? For a moment, the request threw him. Then he bent down for Conroy's arm. The suit fibers and actuators still rendering it rigid upon impact. His fingers closed around the limb. His eyes took in the shiny joint where the guillotine blade's monatomic whip had sliced it free. A gash ran from her elbow upwards, breaching the suit's tough matrix. The suit had detected the breach and reacted immediately to save her. He was stunned at how she'd sat there the whole time, running things, calmly getting them going. However, she hadn't trusted herself to click free of the troop rack. She'd waited for his assistance. Help me get that attached and then we'll hit the road, Conroy ordered. And then she continued, put all the drones out on patrol. We're breaking protocol, but they'll give us any advance warning. Uraeus, I need you to collect the buckets. I know it's not an easy task, but I need Sasha's help first. And once you have all of them, gather up any additional ammo or supplies you can salvage. I'm setting our clock to 15 minutes, and then we move. Yes, sir. Uraeus replied as he clipped the Linac rifle to his back and began climbing over the remains of the troop rack. Sasha spared the three bags on the floor by the three printer a brief glance, concerned. Fifteen minutes wasn't much time at all. Conroy's left hand clapped him on the shoulder. Come on, Sasha, focus here. Take my arm and seat it over the seal until the interfaces lock up. There, see, that was the easy part. This is the bit where you're going to hate me for a moment. She reached out from her suit, AI, and took control of his suit. He stumbled closer, and the suit reached down for her left hand. His fingers worked without his own accord, detaching the bush glove covering Conroy's suit-encased hand, and then she was clamping the glove to his. A rapid series of commands raced through the overlay when Conroy booted up the glove. The glove consisted of hundreds of small manipulators, each branching out and downward in size. Like a bush, each limb grew more and more branches until the manipulators were microscopic. Conroy turned her, him toward her seat and through him began the task of reattaching her arm. Uraeus, anything on comm, she said with a sigh. I haven't received anything other than the standard beacon from the base. That's a good sign. I'm setting up a burst transmission to fire off whenever we destroy the shuttle, advising the base of our situation, the flight mechanic replied. The silence from the hostiles could mean they'd missed us going down. Uraeus continued as he pulled forth another dented helm from the wreckage around the troop carrier. So far, he'd recovered five of the shuttle's passengers. Sir, what are we going to do if I can't recover all the buckets in the time you've given us? I'm all for helping my fellow soldier, but we're inviting trouble by staying here. Uraeus stood on the pile of debris looking down at them. Is there a problem, flight mechanic, Conroy asked, as the glove manipulators hesitated? No, sir, no problem. Uraeus turned back to his work, his tone sullen. Sasha refocused on Conroy's arm as the delicate work began again. He wasn't ready to assign bases, memories to those scratched and dented helms. That's just plain weird, sir, he commented, watching his left hand move deftly as the bush elements closed the metallic joints around Conroy's shoulder. Trust me, Sasha, it's plenty odd for me, too. She finished the repairs, covering the breach with a thick sealant, 
and then she moved his hands away, pulled off the bush glove, and relinquished control. Her right hand reached out and took the bush glove back, fitting it on. Conroy ran her right arm through a quick series of motion, the suit musculature standing in for her real arm. That's better than strapping it across my back until I get my arm reattached. You never know when you might need another hand, she joked. Finally, Conroy reached up and released herself from the troop rack. Sasha could tell she wasn't completely pleased with the result. Taking the first step down, she staggered and caught herself with her good arm on the frame. Sasha raised a hand in case she pitched forward, and then she righted herself with a shake of her head. He studied her for a moment, hoping that the suit AI would compensate for any other issues she might have. Eventually, she waved him out of her way, moving forward. Conroy stepped over to look at the helms Uraeus had retrieved. After examining them, she put two on the bottom and stacked the third on top. Reaching into her gear bag, she pulled out some quickly, quick setting air gel sealant. She quickly sprayed the three helms together, encasing them in a globe of spongy material. Taking one of the gear bags Sasha had three printed, she placed the resolving mass inside, pushed it down as far as she could, and added a little more gel, air gel on top, tamping it down. Conroy appropriated one of the passenger's gear packs lying loose on the ground and cut three circles from it. She laid one of these on top of the gel so it wouldn't adhere to anything additional placed in the pack. Satisfied with the result, she moved on to the next set of three helms. Sasha, dump your gear pack. Put as much gear as you can carry into this one. Focus on ammo and armaments first. Uraeus, how much more time? Got the last one, sir. I'm on my way back. Emptying his pack and refilling the new one, Sasha glanced at the helms. The sound he'd heard when he first awoke played through his mind. He flinched as he imagined that brief instant before the monoatomic whip separated the other's heads from their bodies. How much had they realized, he wondered. At that thought, he started gasping for breath and his neck muscles twitched. He wanted to tear off his helmet and hurl it as far away as he could. And then Conroy's voice came over his private channel. Your heart rate's spiking, Sasha. Stop dwelling on your cargo. Right now, they're not dead, no matter how much they suffer. And neither are you. Yet. Get your head back in the game so you can keep it attached. We all have a long way to go. Conroy was right. Sasha wasn't just responsible for himself now, but for three others. He'd been responsible for others in his unit before, but they'd worked together. And here, those depending on him weren't going to make it without him. He was glad the timers on the helm units weren't visible to him. The futures of three people lay inside his gear pack. His suit AI brought up their sigils. Comm Specialist Ariane Felton, Corman Delton Perucci, and LT Patrick Donnelly. People they could have used right now, especially the LT. Not that Conroy wasn't doing a good job, but the LT got things done. Done fast, and people snapped to it. Sasha hadn't hesitated when Conroy took the lead, but he'd noticed Uraeus' reluctance at Conroy's first orders. The mechanic had training, but Uraeus' focus wasn't the field, unlike Sasha and Conroy. And from what Sasha remembered, Uraeus was a smaller man who often joked that he was just the right size to fit inside vehicles. Conroy built another stack of helms and loaded her gear pack. And when Uraeus arrived, his burden went into the final one. As Sasha watched their go clock wind down, Uraeus took a moment to pry open the weapons locker and exchanged his medium range Linac for a long range sniper model. Uraeus turned toward the wall and reached for the panel where the CAI was secured. We won't be needing that, Conroy said. Sasha swung around to face her, shock tightening his gun. Right now, the combat AI is constantly making assessments of our survival, and almost all of them are based around the common theme of abandoning our fellow soldiers. We are not going to do that. Its recommendations have become less and less relevant as we go along, and it's not going to let go of the idea of leaving the others behind. I've overridden it once. I refuse to have to do that every step of the way. Conroy's statement caught both Sasha and Uraeus off guard, but the latter was quick to respond. If we're not following the CAI, then why are we assuming you're still in charge? Uraeus challenged. We do not have time for a pissing match, flight mechanic. You, yourself, have pointed out how limited our time is. I'm in charge because I have the most field experience, and right now, there's a lot of feel between us and that base. But what I need you to do is take over control of the drones, since we won't have the CAI helping. You're good with machines, so you get to handle them. I'm good with people, so I get to deal with them. Are we clear on things now? Once again, my name's Jeff Young, and thank you for listening.
uh, right now, so you know. Uh, it's a good time to go buy eSpec eBooks because eSpec eBooks are currently 99 cents piece, and you have an opportunity to read some fantastic fiction that not only includes the Defending the Future series, which I'm very proud to be part of, but a bunch of steampunk and a bunch of fantasy and a bunch of science fiction. So there's um, an amazing amount of things out there that you could possibly enjoy while you're spending your time waiting for things to get better. And we're all hanging in there with you and hoping that things get better soon. Cheers.